So in Smash Bros. 3DS and Wii U, there seem to be a lot of aspects of the game which kind of brought a little bit of a question to the mind as to why Sakurai chose to bring certain things back and to leave other things out. Now, this also applies to the stages in the game. It usually seems like all he does is just take things in a hat and pull out ones and you know, okay, this stage is gonna be in, this stage is gonna be in. So it seems like that's the case with a lot of the way that he thinks of these games. But maybe there's something a little bit more complex to it. Maybe there's actually a lot more planning as to what comes back in certain games and what doesn't. The article that we are about to look at um, it handles that point. I also want to give a shout out to um, Nintendo Everything. These guys are the ones that um, hit me up with this and it was actually this guy who um, he actually tagged me in this so that way I could see this tweet with this article. So we're going to check out exactly what's going on. What is the determining factor behind why Sakurai chose certain levels to be in the game and other levels to not be? He did bring back a lot of levels though, that's for sure. Okay, so some, so Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS feature stages from previous games in the franchise. There are some stages from Brawl, Melee, and even the original release, which is still like, whoa. In his latest Smash Bros. Diary entry included in this month's issue of Game Informer. Damn, so this is a wreck. So Sakurai does a diary entry every month in Game Informer for Japan, or is it in America? I don't know, let's see if this is in Japanese or American. I think it's American, yeah. I think it's American. Anyway, so director Masahiro Sakurai, Daddy Sakurai, addresses a question about how the team decided on which stages to bring back. There are several factors that came into play. Sakurai mentioned the popularity of the stage, whether or not it's a match for the 3DS screen, and whether or not two stages from the same setting are getting ported were all considered, of course, naturally. And below are Sakurai's full comments. There's two versions of the game, and each one offers different stages. You know, I really would have liked to see some of the 3DS stages brought to the Wii U. Some of the, I, I like some of them, but anyways, it'd be impossible. Because, you know, I mean, um, one thing, Corneria, I would have loved to see Corneria in um, Smash Brothers for Wii U, but instead we got those other crazy Star Fox stages, but still. It would be impossible to create a completely original world setting for each one. So one or the other might be a stage ported from the previous game, and the choices are made based on a variety of balanced decisions popularity of the stage, whether or not it's a match for the 3DS screen, or whether or not two stages from the same setting are getting ported. For example, if two different Mario themed stages are ports on both the 3DS and Wii U version. Okay. And that's basically it. It makes a lot of sense, you know? He seems like he handles a lot of factors you know, in terms of deciding what stages will come back and what don't. And a lot of them do come back. Some of them don't. And like you said, the popularity is definitely a main factor. When Smash Brothers 3DS came out, my heart sank into my asshole when I saw that the Hyrule Temple stage was not available. But then we did see it at some point for the Wii U version of the game, so I was happy. And between the two games, we did see a lot of old stages come back. Brinstar, one of them, and I love seeing Brinstar on the 3DS version. And you know, just because the 3DS version is on the 3DS, it was really cool to see these stages that we played when we were younger on the big screen being ported down to the screen like the 3DS. It was awesome to see that kind of thing. And you know, even right now as I think, I don't, I don't even remember certain stages that didn't come to Smash Bros. 3DS and Wii U. Um, I, know, I know there definitely were a couple, but I mean, for the most part, everything seems like it either got remade into a better stage. Like for example, um, I, I know Captain Falcon's F-Zero stage, the one with all the cars on the racetrack. Mute City? I know Mute City kind of made a spiritual comeback in the form of Port Town in um, Smash Bros. 3DS, I mean, excuse me, Smash Bros. Wii U, rather. So, like I said, it's either it's either maybe remade or has a spiritual successor, or it just comes back straight out, generally, you know? But it all depends. Either way, the stage list, I feel, is one of the strongest in, out of all the Smash games. I like the stage um, for all, for, excuse me, I love the stages for the 3DS and the Wii U version. I think they're all great. and. Hey, I ain't really mad. I was never really mad at the stage selection. I think it's amazing, especially the music variety in them. You can't really ask for more than that. Sakurai did everything he could, and I think it's damn plenty enough. But let me know what you guys think about this article. Do you think this explanation of certain stages not making it in the game is worth anything? Were there certain stages that you were butthurt salty about that didn't make it to the 3DS and Wii U versions? Let me know in the comments, because right now I don't really have any. I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.